Hey, True Believers, it's Anglantine here with a review of Spider-Man number 801. And this just so happens to be Dan Slott's last issue. I already did a review of Tony Stark Iron Man, his first issue of that. I figured, you know what? Let's see how he sends off the webhead, the character he's been writing for the last decade. Wow, he's had some influence on this character, hasn't he? For good or bad. For, for bad. It's been bad. I will say this. I like this cover. I do. I like the fact that, you know, because it, it's representative of what's inside without being obvious about it. You know, with the people who Spider-Man saved cast a shadow in Spider-Man's image. I thought that was it's pretty clever cover. It's, you know, of course, it gets more clever as you read it. But for what it is. For, for what it is, it works. I have to say, I, I enjoyed it. So, anywho, it starts off with uh, a little blurb that makes it sound like the story is being told from Spider-Man's point of view. And then it isn't. And because it says, you know the story, and it goes through his origin. Okay, that that's fine. Uh, it must be Spider-Man telling the story. And then right at the, almost the next page here, uh, it, it switches. It switches perspectives. So I got to say that's pretty sloppy because it never goes back. So for some reason, Dan Slott decided, I'm going to tell a story about somebody else and their experiences with Spider-Man, but I'm going to start off with only what Spider-Man can know. Sorry, Dan. It, it was sloppy. Whatever you thought you were doing there i'm afraid you missed by a lot you missed the target there buddy but that's what this story is it is a story of someone's experience after they were saved by spider-man not during well you see that a little bit but after you see the life that this guy had because spider-man intervened now, there's no foreshadowing of that. There's no telling us this is what we're seeing. There's no any indication that this is the story we're going to get. So basically, you're following a guy you don't really care about through his life and just wondering, okay, so why am I following this guy's life again? I just don't get it. What's going on here? As uh, Just wondering and waiting, what's going to happen? Come on, pick it up, Dan. Pick up the pace. Move along, cha-cha, we got a life to lead. I'm telling you, it is a slow-paced book. There is not much, I mean, you know, there's birthdays, graduations, there's that kind of thing. And God bless them for it, God bless everybody. We all have those things in our lives. But when you read a comic book, it's supposed to be a fantasy, it's supposed to be a superhero fantasy. It's not a slice-of-life comic. And unfortunately, because of the way it was set up, because of the, the framing of this story, the story has no impact. Now, if, if, this was the, if, there were the, is, if there was an indication as to this is what we're getting, then okay, we're along for the ride. If you pick up, say, uh, what's, uh, what's a good slide? Like Amazing Man or something like that. I'm sorry, I can't think of anything uh, else. That's a slice of life comic. That's fine. But it doesn't quite work for Spider-Man. Now, granted, this opening uh, robbery, this opening robbery that uh, Spider-Man saves him from, that's a few pages long, so you do get a little bit of action in there. But overall, it's just come on already. Get on with it. Move along, move along, move along. Nothing to see here. And that's the big problem. This is your last issue, dude. I mean, I understand what you're trying for, but it's failing miserably, man. Come on. Give us a little emotional impact. you got to connect us to the characters that we care about. What you did here was to show, well, you want to see how important he is? It reminds me of this uh, story told in, in a movie called We Were Soldiers. It was a deleted scene where they're trying to tell you how badass one guy is by talking about how badass another guy is and the fact that he was afraid of the guy they're talking about. They cut it out because, well, you know, if you miss a line, you don't know what you're talking about here. Sorry, gang, it doesn't work. You know, I understand what he's going for. But 
just following the one life, it just doesn't work, guys. Sorry. Uh, you know, I'm. you got to give him a little credit for effort. So I will give him a little credit. So instead of a one star, maybe this is a two star book. I mean, it's really a useless book, guys. There should have, there could have been all sorts of emo I mean, we just had a major character die. Flash Thompson dies in eight hundred. Spoilers, and you could have attached it to that for Cripe's sake, to somebody we knew more than just a few panels before we start getting his life story. But I, I'm sorry, Dan's concept before story seems to be Dan's fort. It seems to be his uh, style. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't I tell a story where we get all the spider people from all the universes, and then we'll get them together, and they'll all fight this one big baddie. And, okay, that sounds like a pretty cool idea. And then you read Spider-Verse, and you just realize it's a big fucking mess. Dead, what was that, Clone Saga, Dead No More? That was the same way, and this is the same too. It's concept. The concept of the lives that Spider-Man saves. Okay, but the way you're doing it, it has no weight. It has none. Even if you did Betty Brant or, uh, you know, your Flash Thompson died, so the people around him talking about Flash Thompson, and then you talk about Spider-Man through the fact that Flash Thompson was his biggest fan. And now you're connected. Now you're talking about lives saved by Spider-Man that we are all connected to. Holy crap. I'm not a professional Marvel comic writer, and I could come up with better sh than this. Sorry, man. I wanted to say something nice. I said this in the Tony Stark review, too. Every comic book I pick up, I don't care if it's America Chavez number 14, 12, 13, whatever. I want it to be good. Every issue of America Chavez I picked up, I was like, ooh, maybe this is the good one. Maybe this is the one that, I, I, that no one's going to be able to roast because finally they got their shit together. You want that. Nobody wants to waste money. You, every, every comic book you want to pick up, you want it to be the Dark Knight or the Watchmen or something awesome that you can brag to your friends that you read about. Unfortunately, we get this, which is cheese. And look, I like a good piece of emotional cheese. Uh, I, I like a good piece of American cheese. But unfortunately, that's not. This isn't a good piece of emotional American cheese. This is that stinky cheese that Europeans ch trick Americans into eating while telling us it's classic. But that's just my opinion. What is yours? What did you think is Amazing Spider-Man number 801? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you just, eh, about it? If you liked it, please tell me why. You know, don't just go, you suck because you hate it. Because really, that, that's just dumb. I want to hear the reasons why you liked it. You know, and congratulations to you if you, if you did, you know. Anyway, leave that in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, you want to see more, click like, share, subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Cool things happen around these parts, especially next Tuesday from the time of this recording is June 26. We're going to be doing the Gabby Awards for Worst Comic Books 2018, January to June. Make sure you find the video in my video list and vote. Vote for the worst comics and the worst creators. Don't let other people pick your worst comic for 2018. You have a voice. Put it out there, guys. Also, this is the way we make a living, so if you don't mind helping out, go on over to Patreon. Drop a dollar in the till. Help us keep the lights on and help us keep making videos for you. I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that, and to everyone, all of the true believers. Thank you very, very much for watching.